check it out. Hello and welcome everyone to Riding with the Marks. I'm Matt. I'm Shane. We just got out of Terminator Dark Fate. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Uh, I guess this is going to be incredibly hard to talk spoilers um, or non-spoilers. non-spoilers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do the best I can, and Matt will as well, uh, to avoid anything, um, to also precondition you a little bit to how we felt of the movie, um, to maybe make you feel the same, essentially. Uh, I guess we'll talk positives. Um, start out with that. Uh, <laughs> the action um, was, was fan-fucking-tastic. Uh, the action was was awesome. I'm gonna have to censor myself already, uh, but the the action and some of the sequences, the CGI, I really really enjoyed. Uh, I I thought it it pieced together incredibly well, and that was definitely a bright spot in this whole movie. Uh, I I enjoyed that aspect. Yeah, pretty much the best part to me. The music was pretty good, and Junkie XL is yes. part of that. I think the use of the old theme is pretty good. It's not an amazing score, but they use it well. It's used well, anyway, in this. One of the things for me, until we see his name pop up at the end, I was going to look up who's doing this score because as I'm watching it, I'm like, man, this is this is incredibly well done. It's not something crazy that stands out, but it was it was put in there incredibly well for how the how the movie was kind of pieced together how it was paced and everything it flowed it it connected and and i i thought it worked and i was impressed and then as soon as uh was hulkenberg yep um pops up then i was like well damn there he is <laughs> yeah so for me the best part if you're gonna go see the movie which this is definitely a popcorn flick for sure yeah um because the story sucks and but i'm but i'm on positives but <laughs> like luna's Rev-9, the new badass yes. Terminator, I thought was phenomenal. I thought he was great. It's like a mix. You got like a good solid mix of Robert Patrick's T-1000 and Arnie's original T-800 from the first Terminator. Mm-hmm. Like this stone cold guy, but just with a little hint of personality yeah. for a robot. And just some of the things he said, I just it was killing me. It was making me laugh. Like he was just... Not really laugh, but also just loving. Every time he was on screen, I had the biggest smile on my face because him as the character and also how they use that dual, this new now dual Terminator system where he can pretty much melt his skin off and he's like a nano and has the exoskeleton as well, I think was used very, very well. Yeah, it, definitely uh, one of the, the large bright spots. And that's what incorporated into the action and into kind of the sequences and the choreography I, I thought was was really well done, and uh, and that's because of the type of character that the Rev Nine was. It allowed for some really cool action scenes and some splitting and and some awesome parts uh, that that just that worked well. I'm, yeah, I'm I don't know. I just enjoyed everything. So, as far, unfortunately, some of his best stuff is in the trailer. Yeah. Trailers showed <laughs> a lot. So if you haven't seen the trailers, you'll probably be excited. Yeah, and they, uh, yeah. they ruined. I'm trying to be positive. Hold on, and and don't don't look at the uh, international trailer either because the international trailer shows a ton. I actually stopped about midway through, and it pretty much gives you the whole beginning of the movie. Terminator trailers are not known for being subtle. We this has been well documented, even to Terminator Two, mm-hmm. when they show Arnie's actually a good Terminator. Spoiler, and <laughs> uh, and then Robert Patrick's is the T1000, the new Terminator to be. I mean, they, they've done it before, but this one I just felt like gave away solid things. The trailers did, anyway, gave away some solid points that would have been really amazing to see uh, for the first time on the big screen, yeah. I think. Sarah Connor, I think it's just awesome. She did really well. Arnie, as you saw in the trailers, more than likely, yes. he's back. He's phenomenal as well. Yes. And Luna's Terminator. Those are the three reasons to see the movie and the action. Yep. And the score. It's, well, the Again, it's not like it's a score to that will save the necessarily save the movie. It just it flows like she yeah. said. Well, it, for me, I've the I guess the more that I've watched uh, movies and the more I become familiar with scores and and uh, different composers and things like that, it is something that could almost take me out of the movie. It could be a really solid movie, but if the score doesn't work, then it's it's frustrating. And this was one where and we were in our our typical Dolby. 
um, surround sound. So the the beats, the how everything was just was going with the action. Really, it was awesome. And and there there were, I, I guess maybe now to segue into negatives, the the story was lacking incredibly. It was garbage. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it was all it, the stories since T two have not been good. I mean, Rise of the Machines was okay. Salvation wasn't the best story. And obviously, Genesis was a terrible story. And this one, again, just leads to more terrible things. It, there's so many things that don't make any sense. Yeah. No, but yeah, the story is just garbage. It's just, it's really bad. It's, it makes no sense. The, the, and then the two biggest negatives for me is your two main protagonists. Again, another movie with terrible protagonists. Godzilla, King of the Monsters did this to me. And now this has another insufferable protagonist in Grace, the new augmented human that is protecting uh, Danny Ramos, I believe her name was. Yes. That character. Oh my God, Grace is awful. A terrible character. There's just, she's a bratty, like, she has reactions like a bratty teenage girl would to everybody and has no personality whatsoever. Kyle Reese had more personality. I'm talking about the giant <laughs> Courtney version from Genesis. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I have to agree. I, it, I didn't hate um, oh, just, Danny Ramos oh. or, or Grace's character. Uh, it's I just didn't I didn't enjoy them. Um, and the bright spots in this for me were were the action were Arnie's character um, and Sarah Connor. I, I enjoyed. There was one one kind of moment where I I was hoping to feel a little bit more uh, attachment, um, especially I guess uh, being a parent. But uh, and I didn't. So that was the only lacking point for Sarah Connor. But other than that, um, kind of melded right back into a believable character. And uh, and the the acting um, on their part, I thought was fantastic. And I thought uh, for Arnold jumping right back into this, he seemed like he didn't miss a beat. Uh, it, it felt like the same exact characters from the the other um, first two Terminator movies. And I I thought it I thought that worked. Um, but yeah, there were there were so many points where you're just kind of left scratching your head of like, how does this even work? How? If you're telling me one thing, but I'm not buying any of that. And uh, again, trying not to get into too much um, spoiler talk here, but it, there's just so many moments where you're left kind of like, what? And then they slap you in the face with some awesome action, and then you forget about it for for a, a couple of minutes. Essentially. And, yeah. yeah. And and then you're like, okay, back into it. So there, there was a lot of this that I, I didn't hate it, uh, but it, it just was one of those that if you go into this, Low expectations, wait, waiting for the action um, just to be uh, top notch because uh, because it is um, CGI. I thought it was incredibly well done as well. There were some kind of um, wonky moments with the Rev Nine, yeah, with the but separating. Like, I, 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 I think I, guess, I counted like two. Uh, well, that's for me. fine, but with all the other action that's going on, that's obviously all CGI. For the most part, it's good. I guess they still haven't perfected water CGI. That that part does stick out of my head, <laughs> but. Yeah, for the most part, action-wise, yeah. phenomenal. It was pretty good. It was fun, anyway. It's that popcorn-style yes. yeah. flick fun. The thing is that this takes the franchise, and it just doesn't make any freaking sense. No. And, and story-wise. And it's just amazing when you look at it, because, again, we've talked about this before with the marketing. This should be a movie that at least Shane and I should absolutely love. It oh, has yeah. so many elements in it that we love. And, you know, David Gore was a credited screenplay writer. But then you look... And executive producer. There's two more. So that means there's three, plus yeah. Cameron's producing. And you could just see how choppy the story got. Like, different ideas. Some people had some ideas how they wanted to do one thing, and others, and too many cooks in the kitchen on this yeah. one. Clearly. The editing. And you already see Cameron coming out saying, oh, it was a little difficult to work with Tim Miller, you know? <laughs> you know, there's a, there was some uh, disputes in the editing bay afterwards. And... and I don't know if that would have saved the movie if it makes it more cohesive or not in the editing bay because there's still things that are fundamentally done in the movie and the script that <laughs> that are terrible. Yes, and they just they uh, 
go in a way different direction than they should have, especially for an additional installment to... Oh, they last jedi the shit out to, of this. <laughs> that's, that's very well put. If you that, care that, about the story of Terminator, and they last jedi the yeah, shit out of this. Yeah, that, that's a, a great comparison because there is, uh, there's a Subvert lot of... Subvert your expectations. <laughs> there, there's just a lot that you're like, unbelievable. I can't, can't believe they, they went that way. Uh, but as Matt was saying, yeah, Tim Miller is in this Junkie XL, uh, or Tim Miller's not in this. He directs it, um, so we should enjoy it for that aspect. Uh, you get some of the original characters back there. Um, you know, they Superman returns it and and jumps in uh, right after number two, and it it's just it's a popcorn flick that you can enjoy. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna buy this one, maybe, uh, but it's. It's the action is enjoyable, and, and I could see um, teenage me who does not care about any sort of story. Yeah, I'd probably dig this, but Luna's Terminator or his character anyway was so awesome. But it, it just it also led to the fact there's this one little thing that just bugged the shit out of me in the beginning is that Danny Ramos lives in Mexico, they send a white woman back in time. To help her in Mexico. So she sticks out like a sore thumb, but conveniently, everybody she runs into speaks English. Yep. So we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> but the Terminators, the machines from the future, send a killing machine that really doesn't need to be in disguise because he just freaking wipes everybody out anyway. He fits in just fine. <laughs> he speaks the language, he can get along with everybody. She can't. She sticks out like a sore thumb. There it, was... Uh, it just seemed like to me almost the role should have been reversed. She... Because she's insufferable. So she would have been a great antagonist. <laughs> so annoying. And she would have stuck out. But she's like, that's what machines would do. They would just send something back there to uh, to fucking do it. I guess they are infiltration machines. Maybe that's the concept behind yeah. this. But um, I, I just think it was... Uh, I think it was odd. So something we we can talk about uh, in terms of uh, the plot, a lot of plot conveniences, a ton of plot conveniences, um, just a lot of uh, things that were uh, very convenient to the story, and uh, and just uh, you're like, oh, okay, of course, of course that happens, of course, as Matt mentioned, uh, yeah, of course they're going to speak English, of course something there there was a couple tropes as well in this and. Oh. It, it, it was just, uh, those were some things that, you know, I roll and kind of move on from it. Again, you get slapped in the face with some cool action, and all right, but I guess I forget. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. That's another one. Uh, $185 million budget for a rated R movie. Not a good one. <laughs> um, Terminator, unfortunately, might be dead on arrival. Uh, the series, the franchise... I don't know if this can't freaking bring it back. I don't know what can. And, uh, I mean, Cameron obviously got a lot for this. I mean, they trusted him a lot. And Cameron, we trust, right? $185 million budget? Jesus. <laughs> Water Brothers couldn't even dedicate $55 million to Joker. <laughs> and, and they, and Paramount, and I mean, for some reason, Paramount and Fox are part of yeah. the distribution. Something to look up later. But, uh, what's that's all about? Uh, it's... I don't know. This might be the last one. My maybe the last Terminator for a long, long time. Especially anything with Arnold. Yeah. Or, or I, I, Linda Hamilton. Yeah, I think that that's going to be something uh, that will be very interesting to see how a lot of this turns out. Um, they, they they may have to just and hit the reset button and start all over from scratch and just pretend none of it happened. Um, that's the only thing I can kind of see at this point because the, the the way they after. After this movie, um, yeah, it's the, that's I think that's kind of where where they left it, uh, and it's definitely not going to be anything that that just um, breaks records. And I, I'm not sure how it's doing opening weekend so far, or opening night. Well, but, it opened up already overseas and didn't do very well. Yeah, so, so there we are. Uh, it's sad to see it go. It's sad to see it go like this. So, but not sad to see you go. In case I don't see you. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Yo!